hi all so welcome to this channel and in this video session i'll discuss introduction to sql triggers and uh, there i'll discuss the syntax of the create trigger statement so uh, let's start so here we have the syntax of the create trigger statement so let's start with that so first thing is create trigger so every trigger must be created with the create trigger statement then we have to provide the name of the trigger which is not already exist in the schema or the library so if that trigger is already existed in the same schema then we need to use we need to either drop that trigger first or we can directly use create or replace trigger instead of create trigger only so create or replace trigger then the trigger name so this is what we can uh, use uh, either this or this depends upon the need and now so this is the first statement in the trigger creation and then the trigger activation time we need to define the trigger activation time that is before after or instead of either before happening or before occurring of any uh, event or after occurring of any event or instead of instead of uh, which is something uh, uh, that is you can say without uh, performing the dml operation that is the daily data manipulation operations on the tables so you can say insert delete or update so this will skip that and perform the others so the activation time would be before after or instead of now after that we have a trigger event so that trigger event is something uh, which you can say the operation which has uh, which it needs to which has been performed on the table or a view that is insult update or delete so here the trigger event is either insult or update or delete so there can be multiple uh, event handled on a single trigger so we can do this using the keyword or that is insult or delete or insult or uh, let's say update so like this uh, we can have multiple events handled in a single trigger so the first thing was create trigger or replace trigger then the second one was the activation time that is before after or instead of and then the trigger event before insert or after insert before update or after update or before uh, delete or after delete instead of uh, again the next thing now after that we have the event that is insert update or delete that i already mentioned then that event on certain table so that table or view you can say so let's say i have a table table one so what i would do is create trigger trigger one um before uh, let's say before insert on table one so like this will uh, create uh, trigger then the transition variables or transition table so this is optional in this uh, uh, scene or in the case of triggers but they are very important plays very important role so um, using this we can get the values of the columns or the rows which are associating at the time of uh, trigger event so basically uh, we can get the value of any column uh, for that row which is uh, involved in the trigger operation that for now trigger even for in that at that time then the trigger granularity granularity means uh, let's say um, I have uh, written a statement and that a statement is executing and that is updating uh, let's say a multiple rows so let's say it updates 10 rows so for each statement uh, 10 rows got updated so if i want that my trigger would um, 
only uh, executed once or 10 times since the insert is happening 10 times it up it inserts 10 rows so I can I can control that granularity means I can uh, either use for each statement or for each row so these two can be used um, and uh, can perform the same thing that is for each row it would execute multiple times that trigger or it would execute only once for that statement now this was the trigger granularity after that the trigger mode the mode is uh, mode is db2 row or db2 sql so these two are the mode for uh, here so when we use db2 row then that means it would um, the trigger would get fired on every row gets change or insert or delete or delete whatever is happening so on every event a row gets uh, on every row event which is involved in the trigger event uh, the trigger gets fired but on mode db2 sql once all the operations are done then only the trigger gets fired so these are the two modes which differs in itself uh, it's for all rows the trigger gets fired on every row gets changed but it's only get fired when all the operation are done when we use db2 skill then the triggered action so it is again what actions i need to perform this is uh, this can be a single action or a multiple action so if I, if that's a single option of action then that's okay we can uh, simply perform that or if it's a set of actions uh, we can have that in the begin or end block and can execute the multiple set of actions from for that trigger so here one more important thing here we can optionally uh, use the event clause uh, with the true or false condition whatever we want to use when we can we are executing the triggered action so these are all important points uh, which are involved when we are creating in the creating the triggers SQL triggers basically so this is what the syntax uh, is and how it actually uh, works and what they actually are why we are writing this and what actually every statement means is so we have got to learn each statement why we are using that and what does that mean and what does that do so that's all uh, about the trigger introduction so uh, let's finish this video here and uh, I'll upload next videos on SQL triggers uh, which will further uh, give you the detailed uh, knowledge of the SQL trigger so they will be more practically uh, more based on the practical examples which will give you the hands-on on the SQL trigger so that's all in this video. Thank you and have a nice time.